Good evening, everyone. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to today's video. And I want to talk a little bit about what the Democrats might do in redistricting. Um, as for the plans for the rest of the week, Wednesday, I'm thinking I'm going to do a little bit of a discussion on the 10 states to watch uh, this coming decade in terms of American elections. And on Friday, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I may, uh, I think I'll go to the next state when talking about the uh, 2022 Senate midterms. I think that's a pretty good plan. But let's talk about what the... Uh, what some what what the Democrats might do in redistricting because I've been talking a lot about what the Republicans might do in terms of redistricting, for example, in Texas, and I've discussed a little bit about uh, how the Virginia Independent Commission works. And now with this map, I've tried to keep districts in the same area, though I accidentally skipped one, so some of the districts may be a little out of place. Um, now, the issue is if we go and look at the partisan lean, uh, really only two districts I'm able to, uh, I'm only able to gain one district for the Democrats. Um, Republicans would be the ones who lose a district in this uh, plan. I think I could maybe get it to... Um, district out two Republican uh, seats, but I, that's stretching it and... Especially given what the Democrats are going to try and do, or how they're probably going to do Chicago. I think I could clean this up and do a little bit better keeping districts to their cores, um, especially uh, the 4th District. And if we switch it back to the map colors, I'll kind, of, I'll kind of explain the 4th District. I also could probably be a little bit cleaner with keeping one to with the Chicago area districts to where they actually currently are. But to understand specifically the uh, fourth, um, we actually have to turn on the map, which is the which is Hispanics, right? So basically, these neighborhoods right here. And if we scroll down over into this area, watch what happens when I do that. Specifically, the second district. Look at how heavily that is, right? Basically, I don't really see the Democrats uh, separating those areas into multiple districts to maximize political gain elsewhere in the state or drawing these districts even longer so they go out even further into rural Illinois. But the other thing is if we turn on map colors and just look at the person lane, you're going to notice something out here, especially in southern Illinois in the rural part of the state. And if we turn this on, you'll be a little shocked at how competitive these areas are, given how uh, white they are, if we turn back on partisan lean. And this brings up something that, in my opinion, is very interesting to note. And that's that I think Republicans are underperforming in Illinois. even slightly into the Chicagoland area. I think Republicans are underperforming in the state. And that this is not a foolproof redistricting. 
for Democrats, especially if Republicans get their act together in this part of the state, as well as going up into here, right? But basically what I did, if we turn this off and turn on the uh, background map, we look at uh, Alton, Wood River, Grant City, this area. I wanted to include it into this district out here because I think the Democrats may try to include this area in order to flip this district and unseat the Republican in southern uh, Illinois. Also, this is really a town called Effingham. <laughs> uh, and the way I say it, too, it's Effingham. <laughs> oh, that's, that's humorous. Um, the problem is, by doing that, I lose the ability to make this district competitive. But when losing a district in Illinois, it's really... Uh, just gonna happen. Uh, which one? Which one is this right here? Milan or Molin? Jesus, all these. Those would be really hard to keep straight. And then, of course, got Galesburg, uh, Macomb. Unfortunately, I had to include a little bit of Peoria in order to keep this district blue. And that limits everything else to four Republican districts. But we're going to turn on the partisan lane. And this is just to, I want to see if any da data sets will flip it because I haven't looked yet. So if we go to President 2016, yeah, exactly. This is what I mean by it's not a foolproof redistricting plan. We go to Senator in 2016. It's a little bit better, but you still have five Republicans. Kind of shows that they reached their max. If we go to the composite, yeah, it's... Was President 2016 even harsher? No, okay, it wasn't that bad, but it still six Republicans from a map that should benefit. Of course, if we go to Illinois in the 2008 map, of course, well... This would be a really tough one for the Democrats to deal with, but that is the most Democratic data set, the most Republican data set, which I still personally think is an underperformance for the Republicans, though it's mostly in this area that the Republicans are underperforming, given how rural this part of the state is, up until you get to the Chicago exurbs. And even in this area, it's still slightly underperforming in some of these areas. Um, what's the, what is the actual, uh, it, yeah, exactly, 38% for the Republicans, but only 55% for the Democrats. A lot of that is because there was a high percentage of third party votes that year. Center 2016, let me go ahead and look. Underperformed for, that's kind of weird. I think it was just uh, a situation where everything was a little more homogenous. We look at the composite, let me take a look. Yeah, about 40% for the Republicans, 55 for the Democrats. And, of course, President 2008 is going to be, well, that was not what I expected. But as you can see, Republicans have made significant gains in rural Illinois, but they've got a long way to go. I still feel they have a long way to go. I think the composite is probably actually accurate with where Illinois currently stands. So... 
basically, I wanted to see if. I can make something that was reasonable for what the Democrats might try to do, which they'll use the opportunity of Illinois losing a district in order to in order to draw out a Republican. That said, doing that is going to make at least one other Democratic district a lot less blue. And that's going to mean Republicans might have better chances in good years for them, like the 2022 midterms. The other thing to note about these midterms coming up is that with the census data being delayed, there's going to be much less time between when the maps are drawn and the deadline for candidates filing. For example, in Texas, if you're going to run for office in 2022, you need to register or, you know, basically file your candidacy by the end of this year. And since Texas isn't can't even begin the redistricting process until September, because when census data is going to be released, they won't have a clue, you know, Texas is going to be able to, the Republicans in both chambers of their state legislature and the governor, they're going to have a much more compressed timeline. This means they can presumably, because there's going to be effectively no time for any court filings that will take effect before 2022, Basically, they're going to be able to put up the most egregious map they can in order <laughs> So this is going to be a unique cycle. We could see states where there is partisan control of redistricting. We could see a lot of them push for truly horrific maps. And for some reason, I just don't think the Democrats are going to be as cutthroat as the Republicans will be. Because I think the Democrats are too busy trying to keep a lot of their constituents happy in terms of, I don't think they're going to use the ability, uh, their ability to draw districts in Illinois. They could easily get it down to one Republican there if they're willing to split up some of the demographics in the Chicagoland districts, but I don't think they're going to be willing to do that. Consequently, in New York, I don't think they're going to be willing to do that either, though they could fairly easily uh, draw out a lot of uh, a few of the Republicans. It's going to be kind of difficult, and I also think that the Republicans have ground to gain in New York simply because of how poorly they've done in the upstate, western, and rural parts of the state. The Republican Party in New York can absolutely manage to improve their margins in the state. So, Democrats are going to be balancing, they're going to be walking a real tightrope here. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end it there. I hope you all have a very nice evening. A like, a comment, and a subscription is greatly appreciated. And a subscription on my Patreon would be greatly appreciated. Um, anyway, have a very nice evening. I'll see you all on Wednesday. And uh, enjoy your evenings. Bye-bye.